Hello all. We are going to discuss today about the fundamentals of electricity markets and three different mechanisms in which the markets operate. One is a bilateral market. The second one is the energy imbalance market and the third one is the fully integrated market. In a bilateral market, um, we have buying and selling between two or more parties based on mutual agreements. So in this case, the buyer and seller have direct contract, direct contact or negotiation between two or more parties. In contrast to a spot market where a power exchange accepts bids and offers from distribution companies and suppliers and um, they arrive at a market clearing price at which the buyers and sellers trade. Uh, there we don't have a direct connection between the buyer and seller. The third party, uh, the, the power exchange access a third party and um, in that platform, through that platform, the trading happens. Uh, so uh, in contrast to that here, uh, we have direct contract. Uh, I mean, the buyer and seller uh, have direct contact and negotiation happening uh, based on a mutual agreement. Now, physical trading of energy happens here uh, in the bilateral market, uh, except for um, some uh, financial settlement um, scenarios like uh, contract for difference, which we have already discussed in the previous lecture. Now, uh, we need to reserve the transmission capacity for these contracts, these bilateral uh, contracts because it's it's uh, more of a plant thing. So uh, how much power is to be traded? We have an idea of uh, the amount. So based on that, we have to reserve the transmission capacity and it requires transmission rights. Now the load is either self supplied or supplied from a bilateral transaction. Now we move on to energy imbalance market. The difference between scheduled and real time generation gives the energy imbalance. Mm -hmm. Energy imbalance equals actual production or usage minus scheduled production or usage. Suppose we have a bilateral contract of 100 megawatts uh, between a generator and a load, but the actual consumption was something around 90 megawatts. So 10 megawatts is the energy imbalance. Um, so uh, that is what is the energy imbalance market. So to compensate the imbalance, ISO, uh, the independent system operator has to source uh, the, the deviation, the, uh, the energy, this amount of energy, which is the deviation from the schedule, uh, from the cheapest generators. For that, uh, uh, they will exercise security constraint economic dispatch. Security constraint economic dispatch in the sense uh, for economic dispatch, our sole consideration is uh, minimization of cost. Uh, but in security constraint uh, economic dispatch, we have uh, line flow limits in, in the consideration and the capacity limits of generators uh, in the consideration and many, many other things are also uh, there in the security constraint economic dispatch. Uh, anyway, we'll discuss it later. Um, so basically the low cost energy is sourced uh, from whichever generators are willing to compensate the unbalance. Now, uh, the market operator accepts supplier bids and load serving entity bids, supplier bids or supplier offers, okay, uh, and the load serving entity bids, and uh, they assess the appropriateness of the bids and offers and performs energy convergence process. Energy convergence process in the sense arriving at the uh, market clearing uh, price, uh, which is uh, either a locational marginal price or uh, any other uh, price derivation process uh, could be used according to the guideline of the market. Now, example for energy imbalance. Generator A has a bilateral contract or a scheduled contract of uh, 100 megawatt hours with load B, but in actual case, the Consumption is only 90, so generator A only produces 90 megawatt hours. So from a generator's point of view, imbalance for generator A equals 
actual minus scheduled actually is minus 90. We use the negative sign for generation and we use positive sign for load. So minus 90 megawatt hour minus minus 100 megawatt hour, which is equal to 10 megawatt hour. Now imbalance for load B equals plus 90 megawatt hour. This is the actual uh, power that is delivered that is uh, consumed by the load minus plus 100 megawatt hours. Uh, this is the scheduled contract. So minus 10 megawatt hour is the imbalance for load B. Now, um, if we are participating in the bilateral schedules without an energy imbalance offer, if generators are participating in a bilateral schedule without uh, an energy imbalance offer, then what will happen? Uh, this example shows uh, this uh, particular scenario. Generator 1 has a bilateral contract with load 1 and schedules 100 megawatts at $50 per megawatt. So this was the price in the price quoted in the bilateral contract to load one. The total capacity of generator one is 200 megawatts. Now it costs generator one $40 per megawatt to produce the energy. The cost of production for generator one is $40 per megawatts. Now what is the profit of generator one? Anyway, generator one is not uh, uh, submitting its offer uh, in the energy imbalance market. It's only participating in the bilateral schedule. So um, when selling 100 megawatts at the rate of uh, uh, $50 per megawatt in the bilateral uh, contract, 100 into 50 is the uh, revenue for the generator and the cost of production is 100 into 40. So the profit is 100 into 50 minus 100 into 40, which is equal to $1,000. Now, uh, generator 2 is unloaded and has no generation dispatch scheduled. There is generator 2, but it is not participating in the contract. So as it is not participating in the bilateral schedule, um, in the actual scenario, uh, whatever be the load, uh, the system operator has no option of utilizing generator 2 for the dispatch. Uh, it is going for generator 1 at whatever amount uh, quoted by generator 1 in the bilateral contract. So no contract with load one, 100 megawatts bilateral contract is exercised at $1.50 per megawatt and the total profit for generator one is $1,000. Now we have another example with uh, both generators as energy imbalance market participants. In the same scenario, both the generators are participating energy imbalance market. So generator one has uh, EIM offer at $50 per megawatt in addition to the bilateral transaction with load one. Generator 2 decides to participate as well by offering its resource as an available resource. The market recognizes it. The market recognizes it can supply it in the sense generator 2. The market recognizes the operator recognizes that generator 2 can supply load at $20 per megawatt because the here it is shown. I'll show the case of generator 2 here. Generator 2 for generator 2. Um, its its price is twenty dollars per megawatt, but it has no contract with load one. Uh, it has it has no bilateral contract or EAM offer uh, in this case in this particular example. But uh, here it is participating in the EAM, um, the energy imbalance market. So the market recognizes that uh, generator two is cheaper. Um, so what uh, is instructed by the market operator is that. Um, it instructs generator one to back down its generation to the minimum limit. The minimum limit of generator one is, is five megawatts. So the total load is 100 megawatts. So the remaining 95 megawatts will come from generator two um, at $20 per uh, megawatt. Uh, now, the market operator instructs generator one to go to minimum economic megawatts, which is, which is five megawatts because its price is higher than the LMP. Uh, what is the LMP here? 20 megawatts, uh, $20. Okay, $20 is the LMP, the locational marginal price. We'll come to the concept of locational marginal price later um, in this lecture itself. But now you assume this as market clearing price. Okay, the clearing price is $20. 
generator 2 dispatches remaining 95 megawatts at load 1 so 95 megawatts is taken from generator 2 and 5 megawatts is taken from generator 1 so the scheduled amount was 100 megawatts at $50 per megawatt for generator 1 uh, delivering uh, 100 megawatts to load 1 this was the uh, scheduled bilateral contract now the actual is only 5 megawatts that is also at $50 per megawatt because uh, generator 1 has eam offer uh, at dollars 50 per megawatt and so uh, this is uh, the eam this is what happens in energy imbalance uh, now, what is the advantage of this? What is the advantage of uh, uh, participation in the energy imbalance market in addition to the bilateral contract? We will see that advantage of EAM participation. The energy imbalance of generator one was uh, uh, minus five minus minus 100 because minus 100 was the scheduled generation and minus 5 is the actual so minus 5 plus 100 is 95 and the current lmp is uh, 20 dollars per megawatt so this is 1900 dollars so this is the energy imbalance fee that is paid by generator 1 to the operator and operator uses this 1900 dollars to pay generator 2 uh, uh, to pay to generator 2 uh, who produce who produces uh, the 95 megawatts to serve the load one. So again, uh, 95 into 20 is the amount that is paid to um, generator two by the operator. So this amount is directly handed over to the uh, generator two. OK, now load one pays generator one the bilateral contract fee because already the bilateral contract is there, right? So uh, that should be addressed. So load one pays um, as per the bilateral contract and the, in the bilateral contract it was mentioned that uh, the price is dollars 50 per megawatt. So 15 to 100 is five thousand dollars that is paid by load one uh, to generator one. So one of the incomes of generator one is uh, from load one based on the bilateral contract which is dollars five thousand. But uh, it has an expense because of the imbalance fee. Uh, that is paid to the operator that is dollars 1900 so 5000 minus 1900 and in the energy imbalance market generator one generates five megawatts um, at the cost of production 40 dollars per megawatt that is the cost of production for generator one so five into 40 is 200 so the expense is 1900 and 200 and the revenue is 5000 so the profit is now 2900 dollars now what is the net gain of generator one for uh, energy imbalance participation. We'll see that. So what was the energy imbalance? Uh, I mean, what was the profit when it uh, participated in bilateral schedule only? This was the profit, right? Generator one has a profit of dollars uh, thousand. So now it has uh, become uh, 2,900. So the difference is 1,900. So this is the savings uh, of uh, generator one when it participated in the uh, energy imbalance market. Uh, now here in this case generator 2 also uh, has some revenue uh, the 1900 dollars um, for the eam uh, exercised uh, that is also there so uh, now coming to the fully integrated market so this is the this is the advantage of uh, eam uh, participation now we move on to the fully integrated market in the fully integrated market market operators control transmission system. These are the responsibilities of market operators. Operate independently on their members. Transparently manage transmission congestion. Coordinate maintenance of generation and transmission. Oversee transmission planning process to identify needed upgrades in both near and long term. Market operators don't own transmission or generation assets. They just operate. OK, so uh, basically a fully integrated market uh, contains all time frames the day ahead the hour ahead the real time everything so in each time frame the uh, the generation demand balance is the responsibility of uh, system operator um, sourcing power from the cheapest uh, options uh, and to operate the grid um, in a reliable and safe manner uh, that is a uh, responsibility of the operator now how this uh, fully integrated market works the market clearing price for real-time market is set 
uh, in every five minutes. Uh, that is the shortest time frame uh, because in every five minutes they check whether there is a deviation from schedule. Um, there is a deviation between if, if there is a deviation between the actual uh, consumption and the scheduled consumption or actual generation and the scheduled generation. Based on that, um, the system operator balances the uh, demand and supply. Uh, by sourcing from generators which are willing to participate in the energy imbalance market or the real time market or the reserve market based on the um, guidelines of the market. Mm -hmm. Now um, it utilizes market clearing price to determine quantity. This uh, we, ha we have already discussed in the previous lectures. Uh, supply is bid at its marginal operating cost. What is that marginal operating cost in a system uh, to meet the demand? We start from the cheapest generator and uh, uh, we reach the demand. Uh, we, we hit the demand at a particular generator at a particular price. Um, so we we, uh, we go in ascending order of uh, pricing of generators. So now the costliest generator to meet the demand is uh, at place, right? So beyond that, if some generator has uh, uh, submitted offers, they are all they are not going to clear the market. So this price at which the but the last generator is feeding um, uh, is used to fill the demand. Uh, that is a final price. So that is a marginal operating cost. If there is uh, more capacity for that particular generator, which is the costliest one, then any increment in load in the particular system in that particular system will be fed from that particular generator. So this increment in load, the that incremental megawatt hour is known as the marginal unit. So the marginal unit is fed from the uh, marginal generator at a marginal operating cost. Uh, that is a concept. Now all generators will supply offers below the marginal unit price. Um, all generators that supply offers below the marginal unit price are paid at the marginal unit price and referred to as the clearing price for both day ahead and real time markets. We'll see this uh, with an example. We have a demand bid of 50 megawatts at uh, $15. So uh, the bid says that the load serving entity needs 50 megawatts at $15. Now we have four genera generator offers um, at different prices and at different quantities 10, 20, 25 and 10. Uh, so to meet this 50 megawatts, we go for the cheapest generator first. This is the $5 generator that is generator one. So 10 is taken from here. Then the next is uh, the $10 generator that is generator two. So 20 is taken from here. Now uh, 10 plus 20 is 30. Now 20 more is uh, needed. So that can be taken from generator 3 at $15. So 5 megawatts capacity is, remain, uh, it's, is remaining uh, for generator 3. So any increment in uh, load in the system will be fed from generator 3 now at $15. So $15 is the market clearing price. So even though generator 1 and 2 uh, have submitted offers below the market clearing price. They are now trading at market clearing price. That is what is mentioned in the last point here. All generators will supply offer. Um, all generators that supply offer below the marginal unit price are paid at the marginal unit price, referred to as the market, uh, the clearing price for both day ahead and real time markets. In this example, generators one, two, and three are all paid at dollars fifteen and dispatched. Generator four does not clear the market because dollar twenty is greater than MCP and dollar twenty. This generator four is not required um, to meet the demand of uh, fifty megawatts. Uh, so now, uh, so basically, what we do is RTO um, starts with the lowest cost generator and continue. See here, RTO and ISO are used interchangeably. RTO starts with lowest cost generator and continues until demand is met. OK, so that's what. Uh, now. We'll take a break here and in the next lecture we'll continue with the fully integrated market and transmission consideration. <laughs>